Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Skies, where last episode, well, we failed to, uh, well, failed to do many things, in fact, but most importantly, failed... Yes, failed to get our parliamentary seat. Sadly, uh, we just couldn't win that election, but we have, uh, well, less than 15 days to make another attempt. It only costs us 50 sovereigns, which, in the grand scheme, not that much, so... It's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Now, before we go to our main objective, which is finding the Clockwork Sun and selling them tea, I want to check something, because we found ourselves in a weft of time, and it said something about the Horological Office offering more insight. Report your encounter with a weft of unraveling time. Mysteriously, the horologists seem unwilling to talk to you. Before we do that, then. Or perhaps afterwards. Yes. On the outside, they adopt blank faces when you describe your experience and say things like, Sounds very unlikely. Are you sure you haven't got a touch of the old starlight? Makes one believe all kinds of things I've heard. You are sure they know more than they're saying. Perhaps if you are a member of the office, they trust you enough to talk. Yes, that makes sense. Inquire about employment. Not just anyone can become a royal horologist. Horologist. And I always feel like I'm mispronouncing that. But yes. A job for serious people. Now, I did the math wrong last time. I know what mistake I made. If the current time in Perdurance is exactly 7.15 of the clock and the time in Albion is 18.34, what pray tell is the current time in Lustrum? 18.34. Because it matches Albion. Always match Albion. And now a tricky one, perhaps. The train from Brabazon Warkworld arrives at 11.30 in London. The current time shown on the Master Brabazon clock is 14.30. If the train took exactly one hour to make the journey, it is not, of course. I'm Elia da 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 Okay, so it's one hour off of... I'm sorry. What was the accurate time of its original departure? So yeah, last time I subtracted it from the Brabazon clock, not the London clock. So it's 10.30. There we go. And yeah, let's uh, nudge him awake real quick. Gently, fellow's pushing 100. He makes for the start. Hmm, oh, excuse me, he glances at you and says, Well, you seem to have the idea. No point going through the other 248 questions. Congratulations, you're now officially a Royal Hourologist. Apprentice, third class. He pauses. Speaking of which, I have an assignment for you. Temporal inconsistency, a suitable test of your practical skills. Take this pocket watch. Use both your badge of office and your compass pointing to the correct time. Wear it proudly. Keep it well wound. Do not get it wet. The smaller gears are quick to rust. You have an assignment in New Winchester. Oh! Curious, I have yet more reasons to go back to the Reach. Hmm. Report your encounter with a weft of unraveling time. As soon as you mention the weft, the chief hourologist springs up and closes the door to his office. There, now we can talk more openly. And please do. New work. These outbreaks of unruly time are politically sensitive. I assume preventing or repairing them is beneath Her Majesty's dignity. She is, of course, terribly busy. Our office has been instructed to make such repairs as we can. We've invented the Raveling Jacks, simplified hour looms that can reweave time's torn fabric. If you would assist, we'll pay for every weft repaired. Unfortunately, the Jacks only work from inside a weft, a delicate operation, and I'm afraid the machines are fragile. My superiors insist... We demand a small deposit before you requisition one. It will take up a slot in our hold. Eh, that's a little bit messy. Hmm. It is, for all intents and purposes, an hour loom small enough to fit on a locomotive, which can be used to repair wefts of unraveling time. The office will release one to you in return for a modest deposit. And I know where one is, so... Ah. Interesting. The Jack is a cumbersome machine with an improbable number of arms and wheels. It comes with an almost indecipherable instruction manual and a stern lecture from the officer in charge of the supply closets. Hmm. That part where it might break, kind of very unfortunate. Hmm. But, assuming that they are fixed in terms of space, it's around here. Or no. No, you were around here, if I recall correctly. It's something I can review later. Oh, dearie me. 
damaging myself already. Wow, I did a lot of damage to myself, actually. Holy crap. Um, no, we're going east, northeast to get to the Clockwork Sun. At least that's the plan. Who knows what diversions we might end up on. Who could say? Who could say? And, uh, keep an eye on the calendar. Yeah? Hmm. Also, I'm wondering how much they pay for me to fix these wefts of unraveling time. And when they say that it's beneath the notice of her enduring majesty, I suspect it's beyond her control. Because, I mean, we're putting a human in charge of literal time, is my understanding. So I wonder... I wonder about many, many things. This is solid? It sure is. A bleak and stony stretch of sky. Yeah, now that we're closer in... Okay, no, that's just music. I... That initial tune had me worried there for a minute. Endure this lean, cruel hour. Your doubts are hungry tonight. They seize on your past decisions one by one, worrying at each like wolves at a lamb. Sleep is impossible. When your shift arrives, you arise haggard and unrested. You splash water on your face and wonder what mistakes you will make today. Yep, not good. Not great. Something we'll work on. Hello, friend. I... Please don't get that close. I've seen you explode into worms, and it was very worrying when you did. Yeah, that's right. Don't be interested at all. Nothing interesting here, officers. Nothing interesting at all. Oh, good. Something ghastly. I was hoping. On the other hand... East, northeast. This is the way. Though strange, I'm kind of wondering how randomized the map is, because this is not where I would put a clockwork sun. I would put it relatively close to London. Yes? Ah, uh, well, we found another weft of time. Uh, let's try that jack. He pulled into the weft. Inspect your unra- well, raveling, Jack. Its spindly, manifold arms grope wildly, seeking the snarl of the weft. The device needs more time to catch the strands of the weft. You must endure the surging tides of time a little longer first. Remain in the weft. A little bit of terror. It's awful, but... Ah, the Raveling Jack is stuck. It has caught the torn time of the weft, but some part of its mechanism has failed. Can you find the problem in time? Apparently, finally, a success. Repaired. Crawling into the casing of the machine, you identify the fault. Free the machinery and scramble out before you get raveled. The steel arm darts forward and back. The gears whir. The rent in time is woven back together, and you are returned to your present. The horological office will be pleased. Unfortunately, it was very terrifying, but we are. Yeah, that's not good. That's bad. The clockwork sun fills your windows. Its light is as blank and starched as a nurse's apron. Send out the owl. Our terror situation is disastrous, but... Oh my. Loot this, a bully's acre. Break open a coffin. Perhaps should not have done so. Two of your crew keep the coffin from drifting while you get to work on the crowbar. The lid comes off abruptly, unleashing a cloud of noxious vapors. The wind snatches them away, but not before one of your compatriots gets a whiff of them through his sky suit. Inside, you find moldering bridal lace and a gaudy ring. Later that day, your compatriot begins to cough. The next day, the cough has a meaty wetness to it. The crew begin avoiding him. That was worrisome, but also I'm... Oh. Oh, 
Oh no. I would perhaps prefer not to know. At this point, our terror is disastrously high. The dock is rarely used and its maintenance has lapsed. There's evidence of rust and metal strain, but only of non-crucial components. It's safe to stop for now. Once inside the dock, the sun's scouring light is diminished. Arrival at the sun. An outpost on the roaring edge of the sun, shielded from malevolent light by an eggshell of stained glass. As you emerge from your train, suit-swaddled engineers gather, plainly astonished by your arrival. They bombard you with complex questions about how you dealt with the dense sunlight and skewed chronosolar fields. Once satisfied, they hand out protective suits to you and your crew. Yours is patched and torn, one boot missing. You successfully reach the sun, shrug into your suit. An engineer sprays you with a substance that smells like lemons gone wrong and searches your pockets. A cursory effort at best, they seem distracted. Distracted by what? Hmm. Sunlight seeps like syrup through cracks in the stained glass ceiling. The floor shudders in time with the training machinery far beneath your feet. The air has a tang of chemicals, bonfires, and rain. Pistons pump, cogs turn, and suit swaddled figures tend to the enginery, bellowing over the shrieking metal. Oh, no. No, 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 no. This place is breaking down. The clockwork sun is the preeminent symbol of the Empire's heavenly dominion. The newspapers in London call it enduring, everlasting, eternal. The heart of the Empire. In response to your questions, the engineers shrug. The day dawns, the sun brightens, the night comes, the sun dims. What more is there to say? Some of them seem so exhausted they can barely stand. They insist it's proximity to the sun that affects their sleep. You now have one yearning, burning. The light the sun I see it appears to be as I had feared perhaps 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 we're wrong uh, head towards the sundial shaped building you'll be the sequencer's new favorite project one of the engineers tells you it'll keep him out of our hair after a while azimuth azimuth is an enormous sundial without shadow its roof toppled by a golden shark fin Nomon. There are still racks of yellowed pamphlets on the walls. It once served as a kiosk, selling tickets to sunspotters, the pilgrims and tourists that were expected to flock here. These days, it's more like a temple. Frescoes on the curved wall depict the triumph of the new sun over the old. Oh, no, 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 no. You needed 100 at most. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean... The sequencer has a request. Um... Oh dear. The fig a figure in a yellow colored protective suit is delivering a sing-song sermon to mostly empty pews. The dazzled sequencer looks up, delighted at your approach, and hurriedly wraps up his speech. He offers you tea with a flash of two white teeth. Ask the dazzled sequencer about his role on the sun. The only other people up here are disturbed prisoners and exhausted engineers. The sequencer's function. I'm a priest of the new sequence, declares the sequencer. The brightest truth of the wildfire that has swept to Albion. He points out at the expanse of the sun. There burns a beacon, a savior, an aspect of God. We venerate the clockwork sun and its immortal architect, our empress. I'm here to greet pilgrims and safeguard the souls of our engineers. Azimuth is all... So, the only access route to the Sun Shattered Dome, an exhibition hall that was built back when we received more visitors. The dome is terribly dangerous, and I'd advise you to avoid it, no matter how much you hear about the priceless artifacts inside. Hmm. What if we were to request access to the Sun Shattered Dome, though? Beyond Azimuth lies the maze of abandoned exhibition halls, crowned by a magnificent broken dome. The sequencer obviously takes his role as gatekeeper seriously. He fusses around you, checking you and your crew's gear, tugging on straps, checking for rips, wiping your stained glass goggles with a silk handkerchief. All the while, he spouts an endless stream of warnings. Don't enter the Shalimar, never travel in a group of three or fewer, and resist the urge to sing no matter how fiercely your throat burns. And for sequence's sake, watch the condition of your suit. 
that he pats you on the back, hands you a brochure, and sends you through the heavy iron door to the dome. Okay, see, I didn't want to actually go in. But... Ooh, you tempt me so much. No, no, my terror situation is disastrous. I can't. I can't. I cannot. Exhibition Hall is built to accommodate sunspotter tourists and sequence pilgrims, and abandoned after the danger of the sun became impossible to hide. Priceless paintings hang in bleached rags. Magnificent relics have been left to accumulate glittering glass dust. Is anything still intact? The stained glass sky has collapsed, and unfiltered sunlight gnaws savagely at your hazard suit. It's currently undamaged, though a little shabby. You come upon what looks like a glittering gold carousel, but instead of horses, it features glass bottles as tall as you. They are filled with an Im a near-impenetrable liquid, and within, dark shapes writhe sluggishly. I'm sorry, one, one more time. You come upon what looks like a glittering gold carousel, but instead of horses, it features glass bottles as tall as you. They're each filled with a near-impenetrable liquid, and within, dark shapes writhe sluggishly. Were they trying to make... No, it doesn't... It doesn't quite sound like the engine from Sunless Sea. You know the one I'm talking about, if you've played it. Interesting. Wish I could remember the name myself. The Bright Engine, if you will. Uh, it's probably a bad idea, but investigate the carousel. Perhaps you can deduce its purpose. It might have something of value. Or that could happen. The Tempest Prognosticator. Brushing aside glitter dust, you discover a label on the carousel's base. Tempest Prognosticator. Each ball is similarly labeled Philosopher. Something roils through the glass. You study the controls to no avail. You pull some levers at random and nothing happens. You attempt to pull one of the balls free, but it's moored far too firmly. Eventually, you're forced to give up and move on. I think we return to safety. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. The stained glass sky has collapsed and unfiltered sunlight gnaws savagely at your hazard suit. It's currently battered, but it mostly seems to be holding up. For right here, loose panel there. A scream, one of your crew is staring in horror at her hand, which has suddenly shriveled and sprouted liver spots. Light can do strange things to the flow of time, and you seem to have strayed into a bad patch. Return to safety. We, uh, we spent too long out here already. You don't want to return to your train with glass-frosted toes. Interesting. So, it's relatively safe. Comparatively. The sequencer has a request. Together we can help the less fortunate, he says. You'll be compensated for your time. A charitable mission. There are many poor souls out there in need of our help. Beleaguered, ignorant masses. I've never met them, but I'm assured they exist. He pauses to wipe his eyes. When we lift them from their contemptible state, perhaps they will come to appreciate the greatness of the sequence. He sends an orderly to fetch a wooden crate. Once it's set down before him, he wraps the lid proudly. 600 manuals on how to correctly tie a bow tie. Okay. Deliver these to Brabazon Workworld, and I'm sure they will be immensely benefited by their improved understanding of etiquette. Yeah, okay. L leave Azimuth. Um. Huh. Before I do anything else, because I will otherwise forget this, uh, not the decommissionary, although... A cheerful sign boy lists the goods on offer, Her Majesty's Finest Coal and Her Majesty's Finest Stained Glass Sunproof Windows. No comestibles, though. Nothing edible grows here. Yeah, about that. The Clockwork Sun does not, of course, run on tea, but the battalion of engineers who maintain it surely must. Every month, a new tender for three caddies of dried tea is offered, regular as, yes, clockwork. The Clockwork Sun lies, etc. An expulsion of problematic material. The dazzled sequencer sells buckets full of armaments retrieved from Azimuth. Terrible hazard, all these instruments of lethality lying about the place, and most untidy. Keen to get them off the sun. Very keen. Yeah, I'll take those. I, I can find uses. And I still have more money. Wow, okay. That was really worth it, then. A solitary foreman asks you to wheel the tea through the empty corridors to a storeroom. It's stacked with identical, unopened, dust-covered crates. Either the sun engineers don't like tea, unthinkable, or there are fewer of them than is presumed. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it does seem like this place is breaking apart. Nope, no, I still have more to explore. Thank you very much. And it's curious. 
Part of me wants to go into the sun, as it were. But I know that's a bad idea and will get us killed at this stage, so visit the glass house regardless. There's a dozen signs warning you to stay away, each more insistent than the last. The engineers shout, but they're too busy to stop you. Glass House. An isolated section of the abandoned exhibition halls has been repurposed to hold not treasures, but prisoners. Each wears a gray smock rather than a protective suit, leaving them utterly undefended from the ravages of sunlight. They sit slumped in unlocked cells, making no effort to escape. Where would they go? Some of the prisoners are shining at the seams. Some have eyes of curdled glass. A fractured face turns to watch you. A few are sing singing in praise of the sun. Mouths bloody and throats tattered, you should perhaps be horrified, but the song wraps tender cords around your mind and numbs you. Glass crunches underfoot. When you lift your boot, you discover a cracked ear beneath. It's the sun that's making them all glassy. Curious, curious thing. I worry what this will do to my terror situation, and I do want to keep this captain alive. Hmm. Approach the half glass empty. Only one cell is locked, and the man within is neither singing nor screaming. The left half of his body is shimmering, translucent. Only the flesh and muscle of his left half is vitrified, not the bones and blood within. Glass is suffused with a thousand fine frozen capillaries, like delicate red cracks running through ice. He fixes you with an anguished stare. Get me out of here. Why is his cell locked and his alone? There was an exhibition hall once, never a prison. This, rather, was an exhibition hall once, never a prison. An engineer must have had to install those bars especially for him. The Empty's conviction. The others would not leave even if they could. Their minds are lost. The Empty attempts a one-sided shrug, and, well, the Empire sent me here because I was smuggling sunlight from the Neath, back before the horizons closed. When I sold it, I told my customers that the light from the clockwork sun was toxic, and true sunlight was the only cure. Ended up causing a minor panic in London. I think one of the engineers locked me in because he took offense at my criticism, though. He gestures at his vitrified body. I stand by it. Yeah, evidently. Evidently. But is it a side effect or a deliberate effect on the part of the thing running the clockwork sun? Question. Agree to help the empty escape. It seems like the right thing to do. A barely perceptible nod, the glass in his neck creaks. Ah. One more permit. Thank you. His voice is hoarse and he speaks in barely a whisper. You'll need to find a permit for my release and present it to the steward. Forge legitimate, I don't care. Hurry away from this place, though. You've left the prisoners behind, so why do you still hear their songs? Hmm. Descend to the Terpes Terpsichore Vault. The vault below the vaults below, interesting, are safer, protected by a dozen layers of stained glass. Beneath the machine bristling surface you find a ring of nine vault doors, each engraved with the name of a classical muse. Eight are locked and barred behind signs saying things like vacant or under renovation, or in one case, unfortunate chronological discrepancies. The ninth, marked Terpsichore, is the only door open to you. When you enter, your footsteps ring through dusty barracks and abandoned canteens. These are the engineer's quarters, but they're all on the surface, working, except one. The broken steward has been working on the sun since before it first shone. She's been here far, far longer than any of the engineers above. The broken steward makes her way carefully toward you, cane clacking on the floor. She has a markedly stiff-limbed gait, and her arms creak as she removes her helmet. Speak with the broken steward. She smiles. Her teeth glint oddly. Glassy, perhaps. She catches you glancing at her mouth and smiles even wider. Her teeth are shards of cracked glass, protruding at odd angles from her gums. It's not just the teeth, she says with a brusque air that brooks no sympathy. Damn son turned my bones as well. Terrible nuisance, really. It gets in the way of work. You notice her fixed neck, her stiff limbs, her careful movements. Not too bad, she says. Good thing I like soup. Oh my. Return back and out back out into the poison light. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm sorely tempted to dive into the terror, but it's a bad decision. 
We need to get out of here now. We need to not be here. Not at this stage, not at this level of terror. Although if an event wants to pop and bring my terror down 50 points, maybe we go back. If it's soon enough. Yeah, we found the Clockwork Sun, and it is worse than I thought it would be. I was expecting bright-eyed engineers. Turns out they're all turning very glassy. Literally glassy. Which is an odd effect for light to have. It makes me wonder what the sequence is exactly. If you get my meaning. I mean, there's a cult built around it, but that tells us very little in the grand scheme. You can build a cult around anything. Now, now. No need for that. We'll be back in London before you know it. And if my achievements are anything to go by, we only have two more ports to find in London. No. Oh, you stupid, stupid, stupid sons of bitches. Okay. As the strain on the crew increases, they begin to make mistakes. This one might prove fatal. A fire has broken out into the hold. Already orange flames are inching towards the carefully packed munitions you are transporting. How did you light my hold on fire? Move the munitions away from the fire. This will prevent an explosion, even if it leaves the rest of your cargo at the mercy of the fire. Fine. Oh my god, you idiots. I, I just... How? You help your crew heave the munitions out of the hold while the fire rages. It eventually burns itself out after claiming its tithe of your cargo. Which fortunately wasn't much, just a bit of supplies. Good to know that it only takes out certain items, so I don't really have to worry about it. This as long as they actually... As long as I only carry the munitions, it's fine. Also, I kind of like that there are risks associated with having, like, stuff in your hold. That's, that's kind of cool, actually. I can appreciate it. Let's go to the horological office. Eh, uh, yeah. Let's go to the horological office. Whether it's a good idea or not, that's another discussion. By the way, I do still have one more. Okay. Hmm, might go down towards London, well, London. No, 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 the Parliament. Just to finish off that opportunity, make some more money. Get a port report handed into the, well, to the Ministry, instead of who I want to hand it into, but that's another discussion entirely. Although, looking at our sovereign situation, well... There are debates to be had, not right now, but soon. We should have enough to get back to London proper. Should. Not necessarily will, but should at this rate. No, no, no. I keep hitting C while I'm moving, thinking that it will just automatically go, but apparently you need to be stopped. Or at least only be hitting C. One or the other. Grand scheme of things, it's fine, I suppose, but yeah. We're getting close to 100, but we're not going to get there before. Perhaps not. Ha ha! Cheating! Always the right answer. I mean, it's technically not cheating, because it gave me the option just, you know what? Maybe I don't. Maybe nobody came in there. Maybe nobody had me deal with that. Oh, dear. I know, I know, exploiting and... Yeah. But in my defense, it would have killed me otherwise, so... The offices will pay handsomely if you can produce evidence of repairs made to incidents of unraveling time. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ugh. This part I don't like. The improving the state of the Clockwork Sun, not really my goal. But there you go. Oh my. The chief horologist examines your reports with forensic care, filing, filling pages of his notebook with neat ink before he is satisfied. Excellent, one of the clerks will see to your fee. Now make sure the ministry hears of your good work. 
Return an intact Raveling Jack. Actually, I mean... I might as well keep it, right? Because I can make 200 per weft in time, and I found two of them already, so... Yeah. Let's keep that. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Sorry. I forgot. I had forgotten. Ministry of Public Decency. Can I just take tea with you real quick? Do you help me deal with terror? No. No, you, you really don't. <sighs> take that ministry stamp permit, though. I do want to go back to the sun eventually. Deliver the port reports and get our more money. Which, I mean... Uh, yes. Which, I mean, probably does give me enough to get... Yes, to the floating parliament. I know we're disquieted, but it's going to be fine in just a moment. It will all be well. It will all be well. Don't. Don't you dare. I keep expecting those to burst out into tentacles now, and it's it's not good. My default reaction to seeing one of London's dreadnoughts should not be fear. Anger, perhaps, but not fear. Come on, just a little bit. Could we stop with the music from the thing? John Carpenter's the thing, to be precise. I feel like it's unnecessarily distressing. Explore London, wander the streets. Why is my terror not going down? Yes, yes. Punch and Judy, very, very entertaining and all. I'm gonna hand uh, some of these over. And actually, I'm gonna hand those over too, because I don't think I'm gonna use them for what I have planned. I'm thinking it might be time to go back to the Reach. Possibly. At the very least, I'm going to go down there to get my permit to go to the Reach. Why is my Terra not gone? Is there a limitation on that that I'm not immediately aware of? Because it'd be really bad if that is the case. Like, disastrously bad for me. Yeah, I'm also going to be doing that. Um... Well... Undock, dock. Yeah, okay. My terror is staying that way. That, 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 this is this is not good. This is this is bad. Um. Yeah, let's give you some still salon stewed gossip. Does that 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 doesn't help with my terror at all? Okay, cool. Cool. Um. Well, we may or may not be dead. This is an unfortunate state of affairs. I mean, how would I deal with this? Because there's nothing really at Stephen Sapphire Yards or St. Dominic Station to deal with the terror. I could spoil London, wander the streets, and nothing. City mourning the Prince Consort. Like, there's no way for me to spend anything to decrease terror. That's kind of... That's kind of frustrating, I'm not gonna lie. Um, is there anything here that says it deals with terror? No, good, 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 I was hoping. I was hoping for nothing. Well, we're gonna have to figure out a way to deal with this, and I don't think we're gonna figure it out today. Oh dear, maybe there's something up this way, maybe? Maybe there's some other place within London. Warbury Juxtamari might be an option to decrease terror, but really they don't. Most Serene Mausoleum, maybe? I don't know. Next episode is going to be rough, and I think we lose this captain. Which really kind of sucks, but... Mm. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to bank all my stuff on the assumption that this captain dies. Or at least I'm banking the hours. Because I don't see a good future in them. Well, well, well. I don't see a good future for this captain. I'm sorry, Griffiths. I tried my best. It just wasn't good enough. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe 
An event will pop and we'll be able to decrease our terror in exchange for nightmares. Who can say? For now, thank you for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.